My name's Pete Woods, you're watching Hexham TV. Who are you? Uh, I'm Dennis McCaldin. And my colleague here, Martin Hughes, and we're both joint artistic directors of Hexham Abbey Festival, which is just about coming off of this coming weekend. So, when does it start, Martin? Well, it starts on Friday, uh, Friday night, and we have um, a wonderful group called Hot Club du Nord that's well known in these parts, and they are coming to do a jazz evening. Uh, however, that evening is absolutely sold out. Uh, so I suppose we'd better pass swiftly on to the Saturday night, um, Saturday the 24th, in the Abbey at 7.30. Now, um, there's something very interesting about this uh, concert because first and foremost, the Hexham Abbey Festival Chorus is reconstituting for the first time during, since the pandemic. And so they haven't sung for two years and they are really waiting for this big opportunity. Isn't that right, Dennis? Yes, indeed. Exactly so. They're going to, play, uh, to perform Haydn's Nelson Mass, almost as famous as his The Creation. Uh, the Mass has got this name because of a visit that Lord Mel Nelson went to Haydn's patron, Prince Esterhazy, in 1800. This Mass, in his uh, autograph, is called Mass in Time of Stress, mm. which we feel is absolutely the appropriate choice because the mirror between the economic and political situation in Europe with Napoleon is almost entirely paralleled by the mess in the Ukraine. And so the same kind of anxiety lives today as he worked with all those years ago. Mm. So, uh, and I think I ought to disclose, because I think I know that you're just too, um, Oh, bashful. No, not bashful. <laughs> but what we're doing, in fact, we are playing um, a performing edition by uh, the man on my left. Uh, now, that's uh, pretty amazing. And not many times could anybody have sat two down and one say to the other, come on, Dennis, tell us about your performing edition. I'm happy to do that. Uh, and it's because uh, the... Carrying down over generations of music is full of corruptions, particularly when it was all handwritten. You can imagine the number of mistakes that crept into the music because copyists uh, were coming back from a good lunch or something and didn't quite uh, pick up where they left off. <laughs> and in this case, it was made much worse because the age of anxiety meant that the economic tensions in Europe were such that Haydn's boss uh, decided to cancel the contracts of half his orchestra. So the woodwind players and some others were booted out. And so just when Haydn was writing his annual piece, the only piece he really had to write for the boss every year, he only had half his musical resources. So his achievement in producing this wonderful score is with a small orchestra uh, of a few string players, um, three trumpets and a timpani and organ. Later, the organ part was transmitted back into score by Haydn's successor. Even that was full of corruption. So later on, when I was a lad, one of the publishers in England said, this is all such a shambles, would you like to put it together and tidy it up? And I was delighted to do that because it took me right back to all those different sources and different ideas. And that's the version we're going to do tonight for full orchestra. And do you know, it's a very interesting thing because in my uh, fairly extensive career as an orchestral player, um, I have played 
that piece in just about every version now, I'm sure and yours included, of course. Um, and it is really quite noticeable how different it is. And I guess when you were examining all the sort of source material, yeah. that you scratched your head on a number of occasions about, okay, what the heck do we do here? Yeah. Because Dennis knows, and I know perfectly well, that um, in that period, um, what was written down sometimes, as Dennis has already alluded to, things got glossed over. So a set of instructions to your orchestral players would maybe exist first time around in the music, and then suddenly, blank. Now, it is thought quite definitely that these very clever musicians, as we are very clever musicians, <laughs> uh, would know exactly what to do on subsequent playings. And maybe that's the case. But what has come down to us through the generations is quite often stuff that doesn't quite, you know, somebody's had a hand in altering this, changing that, but we couldn't have meant that, so let's try that. And that's what De Dennis was uh, mentioning really earlier, that it is actually, it's a bit of a minefield, isn't it? It is. It's uh, more of a minefield than many because some composers have dreadful handwriting. Yeah. And so before you even get to having a primary source, you've got to sort out the kind of spiders on the page. Beethoven was a notable yes, character in this direction. Yes. But Haydn was a neat um, yeah. uh, composer and had a, a lovely yeah. musical hand, as it were. Yes. But uh, it, things went wrong for him. Um, he had some less good soloist to do the rather brilliant soprano solo and uh, tenor solo. And so, in order to help his musicians, he scratched out some of the solo writing and wrote something less good. And of course, a lot of the editors coming after, but before we didn't know this, so they took the scratched out version as the real thing. And so, one of my pleasures has been to put back uh, what Haydn originally wanted from his starry soloists. And that's what we're going to perform on Saturday. And if that is absolutely you know, key to this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Beethoven, and what are we playing in the second half? Beethoven's magnificent, wonderful violin concerto. And who's playing it? Well, he has been described as, um, well, a national treasure. Um, Bradley Creswick, who else? Um, so he's leader emeritus of uh, Royal Northern Symphonia, which is my old orchestra, of course. And um, so he, uh, we've done it actually together uh, within this last year. And I have to say it was absolutely a terrific experience. And if anybody uh, out there hasn't seen Bradley play, uh, here's your big opportunity. He is a wonderful musician. I have to say, one of a kind. Um, so there, and that really rounds off, I think, oh, no, it doesn't, of course. Dennis, <laughs> you've written, well, you have written a fanfare for the start of the concert. It's, a, it's the best kept secret. <laughs> it's not a, in the published programme so far. It is, just now. Is it? Uh, <laughs> and it's, it, it, it has the great merit of being short. Haydn, as I mentioned earlier, had three trumpets and tempo. And it seemed to me that it would be rather nice to celebrate the Queen's reign and the uh, 800th uh, anniversary of uh, the market, market, market here yeah. with a, a little sort of ceremonial gesture. So I wrote a little piece and it's based on the notes on the name Haydn. Now, uh, sorry, named Hexham, sorry. And Hexham, of course, doesn't look as though, if you're a, a, a beginner pianist, doesn't look as though it's got many notes in it. You've got an A and an E, but not much else. But because in German, H is B natural, that one, I've actually got an H and E and H and an A. So my fanfare is based on that. A 
etc. <laughs> Can, have you got that okay in your... Yes. yes. Lovely. Sure. There we are. Yes, yes. And I believe also that we are doing, doing our due diligence uh, at the end of the concert and we are inviting everybody to stand and sing the new national anthem. That's right. Anyway, I think that's enough about Saturday, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> what, should we, what should we talk about? Oh, Sunday. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. One of the very best of the young singing groups, uh, Apollo 5, is coming to do uh, the Candlelight Concert. And by the way, we have enough candles after all the candles that have been burned yeah. in the last two weeks. Yeah. There are enough in Hexham Abbey. In fact, there are more than enough. Cool. I'm pleased to report. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're doing a concert at the top of the night stair, which is the most magical setting and one of the very, very best acoustics in the whole of Europe. No question. Uh, they are looking forward to it very much. Um, we are as well. Uh, and it's a very wide ranging program. Uh, the it, title is Where All Roses Go. Uh, it starts uh, in, with music from a long time ago, but it sort of comes forward and then comes into the 20th century. And in a sense, there's some kind of thought that it might sort of encompass um, musics from the two Elizabeths. So Elizabeth I and our own Queen, late, lately departed. So uh, that could be a very interesting, very interesting concert indeed. And I think it gets more popular as it gets towards its close. And they are renowned for doing some very up to the moment stuff. So, and it's good, it's really, very really good. And I, I personally am looking forward to it very much. Um, Apollo 5, uh, is one of the sort of offshoots of Voters 8, who have been, is it twice? Yeah. Is it once or twice, Voters 8? Once here. Once here. Um, and Voters 8 is a group that I have known since it was very, very young indeed. And strangely enough, I had the uh, opportunity of conducting it twice <laughs> uh, in its early days. So it's a little bit close to my heart and, and the two founder members, uh, Paul and Barney Smith, um, are uh, well known to me. So that is, and now there are tickets for both Saturday night and Sunday night. Uh, not a huge number, I think. Um, the tickets have been selling well, um, but we'd love to see you at those two concerts. So where can people get tickets? They can get tickets from the Queen's Hall box office. Um, so that is from 10 until midday and 1 o'clock until 4. They can also go online via the Queen's Hall box office. So you can find that and, and it's, uh, it's very, very straightforward, very easy to do. Uh, and you can pick up tickets online if you're not within striking distance of the Queen's Hall box office. But uh, we look forward to seeing you at those two concerts. Martin, Dennis, thank you very much for talking to Hexham TV. It's been a great it, pleasure. It has indeed. Hello, uh, I'm Bradley Criswick and uh, I'm going to be playing the Beethoven Violin Concerto in Hexham Abbey as part of the Hexham Abbey Festival on Saturday. Here's a little passage from the slow movement, which I think is one of the most beautiful passages in all of music. <laughs> 